Hey, and welcome back to another Twin Motion video. In this video, we're looking at phasing within Twin Motion, and phasing actually was updated with 2020.2 in that it's slightly different in how you use it, and I, in my opinion, a little easier, kind of much easier. That makes a little more sense. Before we get into phasing, if at any point in this video you happen to learn something, please demolish that like button. It tells me that you learned something and maybe that you might have liked it. Also, consider subscribing. That really helps me out a lot. Also, ringing that bell. You can't can't say that enough. Ring the bell means a lot. Helps me out. So let's jump into it now. Phasing in twin motion. What is phasing? If I just had to define it and say what it is, it is a way of showing the progression of your building or parts of your building over time. And if you're familiar with a Gantt chart and have seen construction schedules, lots of those types of schedules use Gantt charts, which is just a visual form of showing a passage of time and a specific event happening, whether it's a specific phase or a specific piece of the construction or piece of the project being done within a certain amount of time. And it's, that is shown in a horizontal graph, a horizontal bar. And twin motion has something similar to that. And you can find that here in the media tab. And then over here is phasing. So I click on phasing and I all I need to do is again, create phasing. I haven't created any phases yet. We're gonna start here. And as soon as I do that, we have, what, we're, what are we looking at? We're looking at a passage of time here, like I said before, but it's, it's a graph that shows time. We've got it in months right now. We've also got this uh, first row here, it's called track one. And then we have phase one, which is this uh, blue graph. And we, the current date is September 20th. And then we can drag this throughout the phase and change the date. So what's actually happening here? Well, I can, I can, I can zoom in or out on the calendar here. It's just basically the passage of time. It's showing a particular start date that you can determine. And then we've got months, we can uh, order this in months, weeks, or days. So if I change this to weeks, we could see that every bar is a week. And we can come over here and maybe you have a longer project and it's in two years and we've got multiple years. And so each month is a bar. It's just however you want to organize. So let's go ahead and keep this at, you know, put it on months. And so we can just see a, a smaller project, the phases throughout a smaller project. Okay, that's all great. We, we've identified what we're looking at here but we don't necessarily know what's going on yet. So as I drag the date, nothing really happens. And then once I drag past this phase one, then everything goes away. So what is actually happening here? We need to actually explain this before we can start moving on. So when I create a phase, in this case, I hit create phase, it's going to take all of the information that you have in your scene graph as far as, as, far as visibility goes, and apply that to the phase. So in other words, whatever you see in your model at the time that you hit create phase is going to be a part of that phase. So in this case, I didn't hide anything in this case. So whenever I hit create phase and made a phase, everything is visible within this phase one. And of, of course, to the a similar notion, if I drag the date beyond phase one, then because there's no phase, there's also nothing, which means everything's hidden. And you can see everything is actually hidden here. All the eyeballs are closed. And so dragging this back, I get my model back. Okay, this makes sense. Um, starting to understand it, but I don't necessarily want to start with everything in my model because the way I'm going to show you phasing as an example is to build these phases as if this building were being built using the different model elements. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. I don't want this. And so at this point, I have nothing. I have absolutely nothing. And so this is good and bad, but you know, I, it doesn't help all that much. So I, I do want to see my starting ground. And at this point, we're really just selecting what we want to see, and then we're creating a phase. And so, of course, we have a ground. What else do we have here? We probably have some vegetation. That's fine to keep. I have, if I go to my floors, we probably just want to work on the foundation. And that's that's going to be, we can click through here. Obviously, the water is going to be there. But we can click through, and so there's my floor. There's another floor. And so this is really great because if I look at these other floors, they're above level one, and we wouldn't necessarily have that. So let's say we're starting with the foundation. That's probably a good thing that you'd probably want to start with. We're starting with foundation here, and it just makes sense. So this is a great starting point to 
be somewhat of a phase one where I just have the foundation in my project. So I can at this point hit create phase and there's my phase one. And I'm actually going to click this here and then rename this. And we'll just call this foundation because it makes sense. We're just working off the ground. And at this point I can drag this date. I can drag the bar to end at any date that I want. It doesn't necessarily have to be the entire project. It can be the whole project depending on what it is. So maybe I'll just, I'll keep it there. You know, it's, it's a short, short phase, small area, pretty simple to draw, make a foundation there. And it just, you know, a month ish. That's great. So we've got phase one. And of course, once I drag beyond foundation, what, what we're actually going to do is keep everything. And we're going to keep everything that's currently on this phase because that's just simply what is selected. There's no real change in what's going on here. And so Really, all I need to do at this point is continue building my model, which is kind of nice because, you know, we're we are going to slowly start to show different elements and different objects in my project as the phases go on. And so there's a number of things you can do. If I if I drag the date out to here to where it's beyond this foundation phase, then my next phase will populate within track one, whereas if I were to overlap foundation and I have in a sense two phases going on at one time I I then get a track two so let's see that in works here so what, what's the next phase the next phase is probably like structural elements like where we'll have columns and whatnot so let's go ahead and introduce some of the columns some of the framing uh, we might go ahead and put some of the railings in some of these supports for the the stairs obviously you want to put in the stairs that that works you know, I we could put in the railings, probably save the railings for now, but that's good. That's probably going to work pretty well as far as uh, uh, the next phase goes. We've got our structure, we've got our columns, everything like that. And so once I do that, I can simply create a phase. And once I do that again, because I'm not, my date is not overlapping with a current phase, I now get a second phase that falls within track one. And I, I can freely move this around and do wherever I want. I can I can push it into track two and have it create a new track two, or I can you know push it along the date to have it start somewhere else. But I'm actually going to delete this right now and then move my date back to foundation. And again, of course, I need to you know start showing elements again that I want to see. Again, we just saw all these different elements here. And so again, with everything selected that we want to be in the phase, because now that my date is overlapping phase one, when I hit create phase, I now get phase two starting at that date that we want, but now within track two, you know, and for organizational purposes, it kind of makes sense that if you have a separate task, a separate phase that you'd probably have it on a separate track, you can rename these tracks to whatever you want it to be. If you want, you know, one to be the structure and you have one phase after another, you can call one structure, whatever you want to be. But at this point, I'm going to rename this phase two to structure. That just makes sense. We already talked about it being structure. So that's great. And so we can see as I drag from foundation over to structure, and as soon as I hit the structural point, I get my structure showing up. And that's perfect. That's exactly what I want to be able to see from foundation to structure. And again, let's keep going with this. I might have a wall. So let's go to the very end here. And we'll go ahead and show walls. That makes sense. Uh, let's also show some doors. My doors are up here. Probably put our curtain walls and panels in. That looks right. Put our windows in, and this will be good. This will be, we'll call this walls or something like this. So I'm going to create a phase. And because that phase ends as soon as structural, or as soon as phase three begins, as soon as structural ends, it's on the same track. That's fine. You can reorganize this however you want because I might want to call this track something else. For the purposes of this, I'm not going to rename the track and call it something else. But you can see as I go from structure to phase three, all my walls begin to populate. That's great. So I'm going to rename this to walls. Always rename these things so you know what are what you're working with and what others might be working with as well. And so, you know, the walls, maybe the structure doesn't take as long. and I can drag this back. Okay, then maybe the walls come over here and the walls don't take quite that long. So that looks good. We've got everything in here, structure to walls, great. And then walls to nothing is just still currently what I see for walls. So again, let's make one more. And this, you know, will ultimately, maybe this happens while walls are going on. So let's go ahead and see what else we need to show. 
Well, we've got the rest of our floors, so we're introducing level two here. That works. Electrical fixtures, maybe. We've got, of course, the roof needs to go on. That's a big one. Little equipment here. I believe my fireplace is under generic models. There's generic models. So that looks good. So really all we're missing is you know, kind of some furniture and lighting, you know, nicer lighting fixtures. Okay, great. So at this point, we're good. We'll go ahead and call this roof. You know, why not? We'll rename this new phase to roof. Cool, because, you know, it's the biggest thing going in. And let's drag this back a little more. Maybe the roof takes that long. And so as I go from walls to roof, now my roof is populated. And of course, everything else that comes within that phase too. So this is saying that at this point, November 26th, for example, the walls and roof are both being constructed at the same time. So obviously at this point when I've started the roof, I have enough walls in place to start the roof. Of course, that does make sense. And so finally, we're missing a couple of other elements. So let's just put the rest in here. And we'll go ahead and put this at the very end of roof. And we'll just begin to show everything else. So I've got my furniture, some lighting fixtures, and that's going to do it for everything else. So of course, let's make one more phase, rename this to furniture, and we're pretty good. And of course, furniture won't take that long at all, so we can get furniture in right there. And so as I drag from roof to furniture, all of my furniture is populated in, it looks really great. So you know, really, that's kind of it for phasing. We, we've covered what it is. We've got the different tracks in this case based on how we've how and when we are deciding to show different elements of my project. But there's one last thing I wanted to cover within phasing, and that has to do with scene states. I did end up creating a video on scene states already, so I'd highly recommend you check that out right now. You can see a link to that in the top right of this video. And what, so I will quickly cover what scene states are again, but specifically how they apply to phasing. So we can find our scene states over here. See where it says statistics. There's a drop down, and we can change this from scene states to really any other option. But we have scene states. Great. And so I'm going to drag this up so we can see our scene states. And currently, we have no scene states. OK. So we need to come down here to the plus sign and then create a new scene state. So let's say, again, that we are trying to start over. So we're trying to build the foundation. Well, it again. Everything within Twin Motion, as far as phasing, scene states, you know, making videos, like it's all about based on visibility. What can you see? What elements are visible in your scene graph that populate that particular scene or phase or whatever it might be? So in this case, we have state. It's just our first scene state, and we have the option of renaming it, which is, of course, what we're going to do. Let's go ahead and rename this. And because I'm an organized person and I want to stay organized, I'm actually going to call this foundation. So this is, in a sense, going to correlate to our our phasing here. And it's only because I'm doing this. It's not like it does it automatically. But I want to correlate this to my foundation. So what I can do is, because everything happens to be, you know, set up in a way visibility-wise that foundation is set up, that's great. I can always come over here and click this refresh button. And then what that will do is apply the visibility properties of everything in my project to the to this particular scene state, in this case, foundation. But because I, I want to show you that there is a difference in phasing and scene states, I'm going to drag this all the way to the end so everything is visible. And basically, we're not paying attention to phasing because I'm not within a phase. I'm actually going to quit this, and we'll just focus on scene states right here. So at this point, I again, I want to show only what's in my foundation. So I'm going to hide essentially everything that does not fall within my foundation. In this case, this is like everything except a floor, a couple of floors. So I've got a couple of floors here. So those floors, hide that floor, hide our windows. And so there we are. We've got everything with foundation. And we, like I said before, we need to essentially apply all of our visibility settings, as in what's hidden and what's shown, to our scene state. And I can do that by pressing this refresh button. So I just pressed it. There's nothing tactile. There's nothing saying it's saved or anything like that, which is unfortunate. So that's a big criticism of mine about scene states. But from here, we can decide to use the scene state or not. So I'm actually going to 
show everything once again. And once I show everything, which, okay, so we have everything back. At this point, I'm just going to click on foundation. I'm just going to click it. As soon as I do that, it's going to take me to the state in which this scene state is in. And in that state is where I've only shown everything that applies to the foundation. Okay, so we've done all this. So how would this apply to phasing? Well, again, I would make my scene states probably before I'd make my phasing because they're in a sense serving as like layers, like visibility layers. And so again, if we look at my phasing, just again as an example, my next scene state might be structure and it would show everything that's in the structure. And I can, the nice thing about scene states is that I can always update those as new elements come in or come out, whatever it might be. And just with the refresh, with the visibility set correctly and then refreshing. And then I can always very quickly come in, just delete the phase and then recreate the phase and place it where I want to after clicking the particular scene state I want to pull from visibility wise. So it's, I would, that's kind of the way I would do it. I would create my scene states for my project globally. And of course, update them as things change, but use those to create the phasing very simply. And so they're not two different things. You're kind of always pulling from the, f the scene states to create your phasing. It just, it makes sense. It's so much easier. And you're not trying to track visibility in your scene states versus your phasing because they could be different. In this case, we're pulling directly from our scene states, putting in our phasing. So again, you can use this however you want. You can you can use scene states however you want, whatever it might be. The last thing I wanted to cover is maybe the project changes, like the date, you know, everything gets pushed. You set your schedule, everything. You know how long each element, each object, each phase is supposed to last. But we, you know, the project went on hold or something like that. Ugh, we need to push this back. Well, in the more options here, we can actually select a start date, which is great. So maybe our start date is not the 20th of September. Maybe it's actually the 1st of November. Okay, so I hit okay. There's our new start date. And I can actually choose to show date marks on or off. You know, I think it's nicer having them on. It seems more to make more sense. But if I come to the beginning here, I can just see there's November 1st. I have changed my start date from September 20th, whatever it was, to November 1st. So that is going to be it for phasing. I sure hope you did learn something. And of course, if you did, please demolish that like button. It tells me that you learned something and that you might have liked the video. Also, if you haven't, please consider subscribing. That really helps me out a lot. And you know, can't thank you enough for all who have subscribed to me. Also, ring that notification bell. I don't like saying that, but you know, it's kind of time to do that. But that's going to do it for this video. Phasing in Twin Motion. Pretty cool. Let me know what you use it for, how you use it, if you like it, if you don't like it, anything like that. Leave those in the comment section below. I'll be sure to get back to you. Have a wonderful day and thanks for watching.